Hi everybody. So today we're going to look at adding vectors that are a little more complicated. You see, not everybody just likes to move north, south, east, and west. Some people like to go off in all kinds of directions. So if I were to try to look at this one and say, okay, I'm going to start off going 70 meters east. But from there, I'm going to go 40 meters, 60 degrees northeast. Now that's off in this direction like this. From there, I might head 80 meters south and then 50 meters, 30 degrees southwest. And again, what I want is this resultant vector here. Now things become very, very complicated. One of the things important is when you're looking at 60 degrees northeast, it's saying, okay, 60 degrees north of the eastern axis. In other words, if I was to look at an axis, 60 degrees northeast means this is the 60 degrees. 30 degrees southwest is 30 degrees south of the western axis, meaning that would be the 30 degrees. Okay, so again, that's sort of a way of thinking about how these angles form. I'm going to start off again with my little chart. I like my little chart. It is really helpful to organizing my thoughts if you want to look at it this way. And I want to deal with the easy vectors first. And the easier vectors are the ones that don't have the angles with them. In other words, they're just north, south, east, or west. So if I start with 70 meters east, well, 70 meters east means I'm not going north-south, and east is a positive x direction. Equally, 80 meters south, I'm going to leave a space for it, is negative in the y direction, because south is a negative direction, and zero in the x. So I've kind of taken care of my easy ones. Now, for my more complicated ones, and if you look at what I'm given here with 40 meters 60 degrees northeast. That vector, again, kind of looks like this. But what I want now are the x and y components of that vector. I need to know how far in the x direction and how far in the y direction I'm going, because I want to put those in my columns. So how do I do this? Well, again, I know that this is 40 meters, and I know this is 60 degrees. And there's some trigonometry that you could do here, dealing with some other functions that are called sine and cosine. Now again, I could go through a long story about how the trig works, but I'll leave that for a trig teacher to tell you. Instead, I'm going to give you a, two simple rules that will help you break up a vector into its components. Rule number one, y goes with sine, x goes with cosine. Rule number two, number, function, angle. Number, function, angle. Y goes with sine, X goes with cosine, number, function, angle. Now, what does this mean? Let's say I want to find the Y component of this. Well, Y is going to go with a trig function called sine. And what I mean by number, function, angle is literally the way you would write it down and type it in your calculator. Well, the number is 40. The function, because it's y, is sine, and the angle is 60 degrees. And that's literally how we're going to type it in our calculator. So let's see how we would do this on our calculator. Now again, one of the nice things about my sort of rule with how you write it is also how you type it in these graphing calculators. So for that y component, 40 sine 60 degrees, that's exactly what you would type. You would start off with 40. Now it's just regular sine, not inverse sine, so that's in blue. So I hit the second to bring up sine, and then 60. Close parentheses. So that's 40 sine 60. And that gives me 34.6. The x component follows the same rule. x goes with cosine, number, function, angle. Now the number, again, is still 40. The function is cosine, and again, the angle is 60. For the x component, I have 40. There's cosine, which again is a second, 60 degrees, close parentheses, and that gives me 20. And so that's how that works out on the calculator. And these are the numbers that I'm going to put in my chart. So up here for the y, I have 34.6. And for the x, I have 20. Now, really important, I got to check my directions. 
North, well, that's positive. East, that's also positive. So I'm good there. By the way, please don't go running off to your math teacher to say this is how you always do trig. It is not. There are a lot of rules that go into doing trig. But for a lot of what we do in physics, because we do a lot of things based on the x-axis and going above or below the x-axis, this works pretty well. It'll be good enough for what we need to do. All right, so now let's apply this idea for the other tricky one, which is 50 meters, 30 degrees southwest. The y component, y goes a sine, number, 50, function, sine, 30 is the angle, 50, second, sine, 30 degrees, which is 25, the x, 50, cosine, 30, x goes with cosine, number, function, angle, 50, second, cosine, 30 degrees, which gives me 43.3. Again, I come up here, 25 here, 43.3 here. Now again, I check my signs. Well, south is negative and so is west, so I need to make sure those are negative. Don't forget to check that. That's one of the biggest mistakes that's made here. And now if you look, I have all my components. So now I just need to do the steps I've been doing before. First, I'll add both columns down. 34.6 minus 80 minus 25 negative 70.4, 70 plus 20 minus 43.3 is positive 46.7. Now notice what that tells me. A negative y is south, a positive x is east. So I already know it's going southeast. Now from here I can apply my other two equations. My resultant, square root of x squared plus y squared, square root 70.4 squared plus 46 7 squared. Again, to show the resultant on the calculator, I want to do the square root of 70.4 squared plus 46.7 squared. Again, square root, because so I do second, open the square root, 70.4 caret 2 to square it, plus 46.7 caret 2 to square it, close the parentheses, enter. And again, it should look like it kind of looks on my paper. That gives me 84.5 meters. The angle, the inverse tangent of the y value over the x, the inverse tangent of 70.4 over 46.7. Doing the angle, the inverse tangent of 70.4 over 46.7. Inverse tangent is the green. Inverse tangent, 70.4 divided by 46.7, close parentheses, and again, it looks just like it looks like on my paper. That gives me 56.4 degrees. So there's my complete answer. 84.5 meters, 56.4 degrees southeast. And that's how I do that. Again, it takes some practice, especially really doing things on your calculator, but if you follow this little method Set up your chart, do the easy vectors, in other words, ones that don't have angles, so somebody's going to be zero on one side. Break up each vector into its components using y goes to sine, x goes with cosine, number function angle. Put everything in your chart, check your signs, add everything down, do the resultant and the inverse tangent, and you're done. Okay, good luck with this. See you next time.